what is science? Science is a process of thought. Science is the way you think about the world. Uh, science is the way you ask questions to find out new things. Science has given people uh, you know, indoor lighting, science has given people computers, science has given people enormous mobility through transportation, science has given people you know, amazing uh, improvements in, in health care for those who can afford to have it. I guess I always knew I wanted to work in environmental issues, I wanted to be one of the people that saved the planet. And, um, but it didn't lead me directly to science. I started off um, trying to be a graphic designer, um, studying this for a while because I thought, for example, Greenpeace needed a much better PR. They have, of course, a good PR. <laughs> but um, discovered that wasn't me at all. And then I studied physics for a while because I thought this would be the way for me to, to drive technology that could be environmentally friendly. But then I realized that really, science from a curious point of view, finding out about climate and how it works was really what excited me and where I could make a contribution and so this is how I got to science. I had an external uh, examiner for my PhD, Viva, who was a, a very renowned climate scientist. I remember coming out of my Viva and talking with this examiner and he was asking me what I was going to do next and I said I was a little undecided and toying with the idea of going into the business world and he said well the problem of climate change is such an important problem and it's up to your generation to solve it. We need good scientists to solve this problem now and it's really our responsibility actually to study and understand past climates, the evolution of the planet to the modern day, so that we can try and either ameliorate the future or at least understand the future. Um, I was talking with somebody about what the, the, the problem of climate change is like, and they said it's rather like being in a, in a taxi, uh, being driven through fro fog, where you feel totally out of control. You're going through this fog, you hope you stay on the road, but you can't see where you're going. And I think that was a really nice analogy to have. And uh, it, it really brings power to the fact that we really would like that vision. We need some headlights to see our way through the fog. And um, I think that's, that it is. It's our responsibility to solve this problem. It's, it's a big problem facing humanity. I wrote a paper in 1975 and of course, it's the first time I found out recently that the term global warming was used. It was a paper in science. So people say I'm well known because I named global warming and I, I cringe because I don't want to be remembered because I named global warming. I want to be remembered because I did some damn good science in my career. I love my work. I suppose I shouldn't say, but I've been doing this for almost 20 years and I really enjoy coming out to see. Even getting seasick doesn't stop me. I get seasick a bit, but it's what makes being a, um, an academic fun. Well, it's especially odd that people seem so uh, skeptical of scientists and science and the scientific enterprise when it comes to climate. We're not really any different from any other scientists, except people look at us more. And they, and they seem so willing to believe the worst of us, uh, despite the evidence all around them that science as a field works and corrects its error. And, and scientists are just too contentious to have any conspiracy. Science are just not good conspirators because they're just too curious and they just like to talk too much.